PFD mentioned obviously the the documentary I Hate Christian Leader. By the way, did, did that did that title bother you? The title bothered me until I called my mother, and then I called my mom, and I said, "Can you believe this?" And she said, "Don't be stupid. Use use your brain." And I'm like, "Well, what do you mean?" And she says, "Well." They don't want only the Duke lovers and the Leitner lovers to watch this show. Yeah. They they want everyone across the board to watch it. P- Carolina fans, Kentucky fans, UConn fans. So, what other way to draw those people in than to say, you know, than the name it? I hate Christian Leitner because now it's universal. Everyone's gonna want to watch it and see what's up and what's going on. And and I totally agreed because it's such a provocative title that it right. just drew everybody in. It's also like interesting that they can put something out like that 25 years later. I hate Christian Leitner, and everyone's like, "Ooh!" Like, like you saw people be like, "Yeah, I really did hate Christian Leitner," which I, you know, it might be different for you because you lived through it and you had people truly hate you. But I'd have to think that having that like over people, even to this day, where they still, you can still make people mad. It's kind of a cool feeling. Like you you know that you beat everyone yes, but so we don't, bad. But we don't want to let everyone know that. Okay. All right. <laughs> don't so let them know. Did it ever though get to a point where cuz we actually had JJ Reddick on the podcast. He's a friend of ours and and uh we talked about how, you know, his years at Duke and sometimes it actually got to him a little bit and it it be, made him a different person that he wanted to be because the hate and the constant like fans going after him and his family. Was there ever a point there where you're like this is kind of getting to me a little bit. You know, we, we want to keep that quiet. Okay. But the funny thing is that I don't understand why people don't realize that I still have that power over them if right. they choose to hate me. Like, just let it go. Yeah. How can you ever let anyone have that power over you, even for a second? Or if you think about Duke basketball, I mean... Oh, I hate Duke basketball. Like, I wouldn't... I, I'd... There's no one in the world that I hate right now because I would never let anyone have that power over me, even for a second in my life. So, so you're smarter other, than everyone else. No, not smarter. Rational. Not just, no, I, I no, think no. Sports ju- fans just are dumb more by simple, nature. more yeah. simple. Yeah. I I I want a slow paced life and I want a simple life. And to think about everyone else and what they're doing and their hate and how good they are or how bad they are, that's just. It's letting other people occupy your mind, and I don't have time for that. So what was the second part of your question? Did it ever bother me? Yeah, because did it ever get to you, like, while you were at Duke, where, like, it man, did. I can't, why does everyone hate me so much? I'm just being myself. I'm just competing. Two things. Um, the first is that it, it did get to me once at LSU when the whole crowd was yelling homosexual mm-hmm. or something, like, and that was in the 30 for 30, Jay yep. Billet. Mm-hmm. You could see when I'm at the foul line at that one scene where like I'm I'm kind of flinching around because I don't know what to do. I don't know whether to shoot my shot or to give them the finger or to just laugh because you know the camera's there too, so mm-hmm. you got to be careful. So a little rattled there. Um, and then the other thing is that I can only hope to be loved by my f- fans, mm-hmm. by people who like Duke. I don't expect the Carolina fans to appreciate me or to love me because I'm trying to beat them every game. So I don't understand the dichotomy of that, of how how can you worry about the opposing team's fans because I think they should hate me because I'm there to try to beat their team. So, right. And I've never seen a basketball player be universally loved. I mean, LeBron gets uh, booed places he goes, and Dr. J still used to get booed in Boston at, at some times, and he was my favorite player of, of all time, practically. So Zion comes pretty Zion close. Zion was close. But I think part of the reason You're why, right. why yeah. some you know rival fans were able to cheer for Zion is because they're like, thank God he's not going to be here next year. True. And with I, you, it's like he'll probably be here seven years from now, you had the kicking our ass. Four Final Fours in a row, where people there is definitely tired somebody of se- seeing yeah. me. Yes, when you're yeah. on a national stage, everyone's like, "Damn, why is this? Is this guy still in college? How is he still in college?" And every from March 1st until April 10th, it was like Christian Leitner month for yeah. four years in a row. So, yeah, that can happen. Um, it's just part of the game. Yeah. Why did you, um, b- besides, you know, you, you watched Johnny Dawkins, what was there about Duke that made you want to go there? You're from Western New York, so I'm sure that Syracuse was in play for you at the time, right? Why did you decide Duke instead of Syracuse? Well, I thought the ACC was the best form of basketball, best style of basketball for my game, 
If you remember, in 82, 83, that was when Ralph Sampson was dominating at Virginia, and they went to, like, three Final Fours in, you know, three and four years or something like that. And So when I started watching college basketball on TV, it was Ralph Sampson and the ACC. Then it was, like, the Big East and Georgetown years, you know what I mean? And and then I started to see North Carolina and the way they played, and I loved North Carolina too. Then I started to hear about Duke and how they – played motion offense and they let their big guys be outside a little bit and at Georgetown and Syracuse like the centers had to be in the lane the whole time so I thought the ACC style of play fit my game the best Mm -hmm. and then Duke the thing about Duke was they had never won coach K was the hottest coach in the nation right around then he was just blowing up in 86 87 so I wanted to be a part of something that had never been done before they had already won a championship at Carolina. And I only made three visits. It was all ACC schools, Carolina, Duke, and Virginia. If I didn't go to Duke, I would have went to Carolina. But I went to Duke because I loved their nickname and the colors and the blue and white and the Adidas and the, the, the Adidas top tens they were wearing. And I just loved everything about it. And then the, the clinching factor is Coach K. Yeah. Do you think you think you get hated the same amount if you were at North Carolina or Virginia? It's like a chicken if, and the egg kind if, of thing. If we were at North Carolina and we went to four straight Final yeah. Fours and three national championship games and two titles, maybe, yes. It is chicken and the egg because if you go somewhere else, Duke probably doesn't win you know, those two titles, and now the hatred for Duke isn't the same level. Yeah, so true. you kind of started it all. You're, you're patient, patient zero. zero. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, if you go to Maryland, everybody hates Maryland. For, yeah, you know, to this day. Well, you guys are. We would hate Juan Dixon. We would little, hate Steve yeah. Blake. You're being a, a little yeah. nice now because I don't know if I go to Maryland if we win more at Maryland just because of me. It's it's not an individual sport. It's yeah. a team sport. You need very good players around you like Bobby Hurley and Grant Hill and Thomas Hill, who my buddy Thomas Hill, who's up here in New York City. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever do you ever get uh, angry when like a new Duke player comes along like a JJ Redick or Grayson Allen? Everyone's like, "This guy's the most hated Duke guy." You're like, "Wait, hold on, <laughs> I'm still here." No, I love that. If some of the <laughs> if some of the hatred gets ta- even though I don't hinge my happiness on it, right? If it happens naturally, where some of the hate gets taken away from me, I don't mind. Yeah, yeah. it's now you're kind of a, it's actually probably nice to be like in a fraternity of hate instead of just the sole hated guy. You're the founder. Like, yeah, you're just like a group of – they rattle off a bunch of names now. You're right. It's much better to be included in a group of three or four. And, right. and And I didn't mind when Grayson was hated a little bit. I didn't like him to see him make a little mistakes and, you know, a kicking or a tripping, tripping there. Yeah. I, I didn't like to see that. But it doesn't hurt to be grouped in a bigger group of, yeah. one, of than just one. 